Good morning, Fairfield Christian and the Thomas Christian. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend, and I hope you guys had a fantastic week last week. We had a five-day week. It seemed like a really long week because we haven't had any five-day weeks so far this semester. We've kind of eased you guys into the semester so far, but you guys did great last week, and I'm sure you're going to do great this week. And I'm sure you guys are going to do great the rest of the semester as well. You guys are all capable of doing great things, of awesome things, and I just know that you guys are going to power through, you're going to focus, you're going to do well the rest of the school year, right? That's right. Okay, we have got another scripture verse this week, and this week we're in the Old Testament. In fact, we're in the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible. It is one of the first five books of the Bible. Those five books are known as the Torah, the Law of Moses, also known as the Pentateuch. And so we're going to be taking a look at uh, some of the verses uh, in just a second. Uh, our Christian characteristic today is creative. And we'll be getting talking about that a lot more in just a few minutes. But uh, in the book of Exodus, where we're at biblically is, you know, the, the children of Israel have just been released from Egypt. They've kind of been wandering in the wilderness, kind of running away from uh, the Egyptian armies a little bit. Uh, they got to Sinai. Moses went up on the mountain. God gave him the Ten Commandments. Moses comes back down. The Israelites are worshiping a golden calf. Uh, God and Moses are upset. A lot of bad stuff takes place to kind of resolve all that. And now they're getting to the business of building the tabernacle. So what's the tabernacle? Well, tabernacle is really a name for a very fancy tent. That's right. Tabernacle is a very fancy tent. It's the tent where God is going to reside. It's the tent that God is going to come into when he comes to the Israelites. And it can't just be, a, you know, just any tent. This is the tent that God is going to inhabit. So it's got to be awesome. And so God is going to make sure that it's awesome. He's going to make sure it's awesome by giving his spirit to certain individuals so that they can be super creative people. It's going to be a pretty awesome thing. So they're going to create all sorts of articles for inside the tent, outside the tent. Pretty, uh, pretty fantastic tent itself. And they need to be a tent because the Israelites are not going to be in one place for a really long time. They're going to be moving around. So they need a temple that they can move around from place to place. And the easiest thing to build and move around is a fancy tent called a tabernacle. So Moses is telling them all the things that's going to go inside and how awesome this tent is going to be. And so we're in uh, Exodus chapter 35, uh, in verse 30, this is what it says. Then Moses told the people of Israel, The Lord has specifically chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Ur of the tribe of Judah. The Lord has fi filled Bezalel with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He is a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in carving wood. He is a master at every craft. Now, I have a feeling that he had a lot of pretty good skills before this, but the Bible says specifically right here that he was filled with the Spirit of God. That word spirit in Hebrew is ruach. We've talked about that before. Ruach means spirit, and he was filled with God's spirit. We don't see the Holy Spirit a whole lot in the Old Testament, but this is definitely a place where a person was filled with the Holy Spirit. There are several other people along the way that were filled with God's spirit. And being filled with God's spirit gives him like superhuman powers. He is going to be super creative because God's spirit is filling him. He's going to create some of the most awesome things that the world has ever seen or ever will see. First, because he is probably a very creative guy, but the Holy Spirit is going to make him super creative. We serve a creative God. God is super creative. You know how I know that? Because he created the whole universe. Just think of, just look at our world today, all the, all the crazy things on our planet, all the different things that are on our planet. Even if you just were to just look at the animals, they're all different. Just think of the fish and all the different types of fish there are. And then just think about how different fish are from insects and all the different insects they are. there are. Then think of all the birds and how different birds are from fish and from insects. And yet there are all sorts of different types of birds. Everything from a little sparrow to an ostrich, right? Then think about the reptiles. Reptiles are different than birds or fish or insects. And then think of all the different reptiles there are, either now or used to be. Lots of different types. And then we get to mammals. Same thing. Just think of the variety of mammals, from a mouse to an elephant. All sorts of different things. 
The platypus. You know, God had some spare parts and mixed them all together to make a platypus. Uh, it's like one of the craziest things ever. It's one of the questions I want to ask God when I get to heaven. What were you thinking about the platypus, God? I don't get it. I'm sure God has an answer. But he's creative. God is a creative God. And we are made in God's image. That means he made us to be creative as well. And there are lots of different ways that we can be creative. When you hear the word creative, most people probably think of art, right? Being artistic and creating something in art. A beautiful piece of art. I can't draw more than, say, stick figures. I'm not a very good artist at all. But there are lots of ways that I can be creative. Another way that people often think of creative is musically. And, you know, I can, split, I can play a few instruments. I've had a chance to play in symphony orchestras and on worship teams. And I've had a chance to sing at various venues. That's all well and good. Great. But there are even more ways that we can be creative. Just in my life alone, I have had many ways that I was creative. I worked in television. I helped produce a sports show. I got to create lots of things. I got to write and edit and shoot video, do all kinds of crazy stuff. I, when I worked at Six Flags, my first job there, before I was the Tiger Trainer, I worked in show productions. I got to write and produce all the shows all over the park. That was awesome. I could do all sorts of things, being creative in those ways. But you know what? There are lots of ways you can be creative. Some of you guys are very good at computers. Some of you may become computer engineers later on in life. Maybe you'll start to code things and you'll program all the, the apps and things that we see on our phones and on our iPads and on our computers. That's being creative. You're creating something from a bunch of ones and zeros into a crazy app that somebody's going to use. Maybe to help them learn the Bible a little bit better. Maybe you're going to be a doctor or a nurse. You're like, well, how can you be creative there? Well, maybe you're going to be creative in the way that you create a place for healing to take place. Maybe you're going to be creative and you're going to find a cure for cancer. Maybe you're going to be creative in lots of other different ways that are going to help people heal and get better. Maybe you're going to be an architect and you're going to create awesome buildings. Maybe you're going to be a writer and you're going to create awesome prose and awesome narratives. There are lots of ways that we can be creative. In almost anything we do, we can be creative. We can think outside the box. Your teachers are creative people. They really are. In fact, in the, ver the ve next verse after the ones we're going to memorize, this is what it says. If I can pull it up on my computer real quick. It says, And the Lord has given both him, talking about Bezalel, and Oholiab, the son of uh, uh, Ahissamach, of the tribe of Dan. Man, these names are tough. He's given them the ability to teach their skills to others. Now, these are two creative guys. The Holy Spirit has filled them, given them awesome abilities, and the Holy Spirit is going to allow them to teach their skills to others. Let me tell you, your teachers are creative. All you guys are different. Sometimes your teachers have to come up with crazy ways to get you guys to learn something. There is nothing that you will do in your life that you cannot be creative. And God wants us as Christians to be creative people. You know, we had practice in chapel on Friday about how, how to talk to other people about Jesus, how to start conversations. Sometimes you have to be creative just figure out how to talk to somebody else, someone you might not know. Just in finding something that's similar between you and them, you have to be creative sometimes. Jesus was very creative. You look at all the sermons that Jesus preached when he was here on earth, they weren't the same. They were all different. Jesus had a very creative mind. He's able to come up with different examples and different ways to explain things to people. We need to be just as creative in our own lives. But you know what? We don't have to do it on our own. Just like Bezalel was filled with the Holy Spirit, we are also filled with God's Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help us be creative as well. We don't have to do it on our own. We don't have to think up all the ideas ourselves. We can pray and pray, God, God, help me to be creative. Help me to find a way to reach other people for you. Whether it be through art or music or writing or architecture or computers or whatever it is that you do. God can help you be a creative person to reach others in his name. And the Holy Spirit can help guide you in all sorts of ways to be creative. All right, we'll talk about this throughout the week. Hopefully you guys will talk about this in devotions, in your classroom time, as you guys are memorizing. I want you to think about these things. Think about the ways that you can be creative in your life. Even just being creative in the ways that you become creative. Right? So think about that. Hope you guys have a great week. Hope to see you guys soon. God bless.